Uh, the first question that I have, um, you know, as, as I said in the panel, you know, a lot of people take for granted the what music plays in a film, particularly in superhero films. You know, it plays a, a large role in the spectacle and, you know, the hero heroism that you normally have in those films. So can you talk about kind of like the collaborative nature that you have with composers when you're working on a new project? Uh, it's, you know, writing the score for a superhero film is incredibly collaborative because the emotions are so heightened in a superhero film and as the filmmaker you have to be very specific about the intensity of the emotion you want the audience feeling and so you need a really gifted composer like I had with Matt because you need someone who can understand the exact level of emotion you're going for and they can create a piece of music that evokes that. Gotcha. Um, well, on the subject of superhero films, you know, you, you're you working, or I should say you already worked on one of the highly anticipated films, not only here at the Con, but of the year with Kick-Ass 2. So I know you said during the panel that you borrowed heavily from um, the Kick-Ass 2 comic books. Um, was that the primary thing that you used? What was another uh, objective that you would say, main objective that you tried to, you know, capture when, when, you, uh, when you were making that film, when you started well, yes. I mean, the the film Kick-Ass 2 is very much an adaptation of the Kick-Ass 2 comic books, but there's some significant liberties that had to be taken uh, because the movie, first and foremost, actually has to be a sequel to Kick-Ass 1, and Kick-Ass 1 is different in many ways uh, from the Kick-Ass 1 comic book. For example, um, Mindy's mom is alive in the comic, Dave doesn't end up with Katie in the comic, had to deal with all that from a plot standpoint, but then we also had to deal with the reality of the fact that in the comic, Mindy is 11, and in real life, Chloe's 15. So I couldn't write a movie about an 11-year-old girl and have a 15-year-old actress playing the part. So one of the big ideas that I actually brought to the film was, let's tell the story of Mindy growing up, which is not really in the second comic, but was something I was very excited about incorporating into the film. Awesome. Well, last question for you. Um, you know, as they were talking about some of the future projects that, that are coming up, you know, one of the major things that have been, you know, buzzing uh, has been X-Force with that film. I know it's, you know, really early at this point in terms of what stage it's at, but um, it, can you confirm that, you know, that you're directing at this point? I know you said, I know I've heard that you're writing, uh, you're writing a script, but are... Are you, uh, you know, at the director's chair for the film, and can we expect some of our franchise players to return? Uh, I definitely want to make the movie. I'm only writing it to make the movie. Um, I just think it's very early in the process right now. Uh, as you know, lots of scripts get written for studios, and they don't all get turned into movies. So I think it's a little premature to have the directing conversation. Uh, I'm just so uh, happy, and I feel so fortunate to be writing the movie. Uh, because I loved, loved, loved the comic book. Uh, I remember buying X-Force 1 off the stands when I was in high school and I bought everything that came after it. I bought the New Mutants run before it. Um, I'm a big fan of the current uh, incarnation as well. Uh, and I'm pulling upon all those different iterations for the movie. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate thank it. You. Really a pleasure meeting you. Thanks.